Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer Podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here with my good friend and co-host, Ananga Sivir. Happy New Year, everyone. Today, we're discussing Ayurveda's take on New Year's resolutions, and I'm grateful that we're having this conversation. As you know, Ananga, I gave up resolutions a really long time ago, but I do set intentions. And as we were looking at what we wanted to share as our first podcast in the new year, I, I really enjoy Ayurveda's take on New Year's resolutions, and I'm glad we're going to dig right in. Yeah, I love how with Ayurveda you can explore the energies around you in the seasons and your individual makeup and how it all rolls together. It gives us a good insight. And today we're going to talk about how the different doshas handle goals. We're going to talk about kapha season, because that's what we're in right now, how we can care for ourselves, and how we can learn what is really helpful and calming for anxiety for all that we learn throughout this conversation today. We're going to leave you all loved up (laughs) so that you know how to move forward in this new year. How do the different doshas handle goals and, and resolutions? Well, the vata body and mind type, which is the airy nature, loves change. So they'll use their creative, natural quality that they have, their creative nature, to think of loads of things they want to do and loads of things they want to change. The thing with vata is it's very generative. So once they start making a list, and I've done this myself when my vata's there, start making a list and you just think, oh yeah, and I could do this and I could do that. So they love lists and creative ideas and new things to try, new things to do. Itta, they're the more fiery mind-body type. They like achievement, they like accomplishment. So they will set goals and make plans in a more structured way. But they can get really frustrated when things don't click into place as they plan. That can be very challenging for them sometimes challenging for those that live with them as well. (laughs) I can attest to that. (laughs) And Kapha, they're the more earthy type, earth and water type. And so they struggle with motivation. They can focus and Kapha has stamina. It's got the most stamina of all the three mind-body types. But they struggle with motivation and they struggle with energy. That's their challenge. So they can focus and they can move forward, but they tend to do it steadily. That's good. Steady's good but they can struggle and kind of sit down on the path and lose direction because they lose motivation very easily. So when kapha increases, it resists change. It has a stubbornness to it. And we're in kapha season. That's the season we're in now. And isn't it interesting that in kapha season is the time that you hear everybody talking about their goals and plans and resolutions and intentions, etc. When it really is a a quieter time. So I find that interesting. Yeah, and that's really why I wanted to talk about that today. We talk a lot about self compassion. So if you want to make intentions and directions for your year, that's that's always a lovely thing to do, a good thing to do. But we shouldn't expect rapid progress in the most challenging season for manifesting. So I think it just helps us go with the flow and understand the season we're in, the environment we're in. And um, then we know how to make the best of it because there are some very good things, good energies available to us at this time of year and some very good energies for calming anxiety. Mm. And it probably makes sense for us to remind our listeners of the qualities of kapha. And so some of those qualities are cold, wet, heavy, slow, sticky, dull, steady or static, very dense, very solid. And it always helps me when I'm thinking about the different qualities and what's happening in my body or in the season, and then how to address that and what we can do knowing that, knowing the qualities, knowing where we are seasonally, if we're in, a, in the winter season where we live. And then taking it from there. Yeah, because none of those qualities sound particularly like goal-setting qualities or goal-supporting qualities. They're not dynamic and fiery and moving. They're static and slow and sticky. Sticky is a real quality of kapha. If you think of 
the elements of kapha are water and earth. So if you mix those two together, you get clay. So it's heavy and dense and sticky. So if we're trying to make big resolutions and big plans to move forward, that's the energy we're trying to move through. Yeah, that makes me think of a path that I was walking in Costa Rica last month and how much I wanted to move through the path quickly to get Mm -hmm. to the waterfall, to get to the place where I was going. And yet it was so sticky and so dense and so slippery that I was forced to slow down, take my time, one step at a time, stay with it carefully, and then finally get to the reward. Right. My pitta mind wanted to fly down the hill. Yeah. And get but I was dealing with a complete kapha environment that I had to respect or I was going to fall on my ass. Right. Yeah. And that applies. Otherwise, we're going to make big goals and plans and we're not going to be able to maintain them. And it's that thing where, you know, you resolve and then you dissolve <laughs> and then you feel bad. You just feel bad. It's like, oh, you know, every year I think I'm going to do this. And three weeks into January, I'm not doing it. It's not a good time to do it. And I think it really helps to know that we can make small changes. We can make good adjustments that are going to support our body and our mind. It's not the best time for manifesting goals and bringing resolutions into being, but it's a great time for preparing the ground. And Ayurveda prescribes balancing practices, and I believe they're called Ritucharya. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Ritucharya. Will you talk a little bit about that? Because that's you know, I'm still in the in the learning phase of Ayurveda compared to all of your studying and knowing. And I'd like to know what what that balancing practice is. So Ayurveda has these markings of ways to take care of ourselves. One of the key healing practices of Ayurveda is Dinacharya, which is daily routine, daily care, which we've talked about on the podcast before. So Ritucharya is seasonal care. And according to those Qualities that you just described, cold, wet, heavy, dull, these are the qualities of, of winter. Certainly in the UK, this is very typical of our winters here. So Ayurveda gives nutritional guidance, emotional guidance, practical lifestyle guidance of how to balance those attributes, those qualities that are there in our environment, how we can adjust ourselves so that we don't get swamped by them or too affected by them, and we can keep balanced and and healthy. So that's Ritucharya, it's like seasonal care. And it's so very helpful when you learn how to care for yourself through each season, when you start to make different choices that are more in alignment with it. And it's, that's something we've talked about in many podcasts. And to make that a part of your day, did you say Dinacharya? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To realize that, okay, if I'm living in the winter right now, Ayurveda teaches me that like increases like. So cold increases cold. And at this point, then the general rule is to apply gentle opposites to our diets and to our environments for balance. Yeah. And that's why we talk about warm baths and showers and warming oil and oil massage to help our dry skin and nourish our nerves, uh, how, why it's important to have dry and warm clothing to keep our body temperature from dropping, to stay away from the cold foods and the things that we consume in the summer, frozen foods and cold beverages and things like that, because those things will aggravate the kapha dosha. And that's why This time of year, if you think about it, if you look at what you're even attracted to, chances are you're more attracted to making a pot of soup, or maybe you're you're having more warm drinks anyway. Your meals might be a little bit different with more root vegetables and potatoes and greens that are made a little bit different way. And that's part of the, the natural knowing, but then you take it another step and get really mindful of, oh, this makes so much sense. I am applying a gentle opposite here that my body and mind are going to be so much happier for. Yeah, and it's very healing. It, it's very simple, but it's very 
healing. There's a teaching in Ayurveda called Pragya Aparad, which means the root of our illness is in uh, what one of my teachers calls it in a very casual way. She says, you know better, but you do it anyway. Oh, I am so that. We all are to a greater or lesser degree. Pragya Aparad translates as a mistake of the intellect. It's like a slight against yourself. So when we know how to live with the seasons and we know how to look after ourselves, we're really practicing active preventative health care. And it's really important and, and significant. It's not just a little thing like, oh, I'm going to keep warm. I'm going to put some ginger with my potatoes or some paprika or I'll put some cumin here. This is medicine. This is living medicine that we can bring into, mm-hmm. into our own homes. I remember just as I began learning Ayurveda, I went out with a friend to a coffee shop and it was about late October, early November. And I had one of those blended ice drinks. Mm. And I remember I was just learning about that. And I remember thinking, oh, maybe this isn't, you know, such a good idea now the weather's getting colder. Anyway, I had it, thoroughly enjoyed it. And the next day I got sick. Yeah. And I got a cold. And I knew it was from that. It was too much cold at that time of year coming into my body. So that was my pragya aparad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And when you learn that, that, that it is human nature for us to know better and do it anyway, start to celebrate the times when you know better, think you're going to do it anyway, and then change your mind and make a better choice. Right. Because then you can celebrate the little choices that you're making. Before the podcast today, I was sharing with Ananga that I, I think I'm really close to done drinking coffee. And I've never been a big tr- coffee drinker anyway. I usually will start the day with a cup of coffee. And I'm learning that it's more of a habit than anything. And that my body, I end up leaving it around. And it ends up getting cold. And then maybe I'll even put a little warmer in it. And I'm still not finishing it. it my body is avoiding it. And now I'm at this place where, oh, perhaps it's time to replace that. And I've got some ground chicory now that I love the flavor of, and I have some different teas. And we were talking about how I could make my own blend of chai. And, and so I think this applies because I know the coffee isn't good for me. Uh, the caffeine isn't good for my uh, anxiety. And it's certainly the acid isn't the greatest thing for my body, et cetera. And so now I feel like, oh, I can make a better choice and still enjoy, maybe enjoy it even more by, by putting something a little bit healthier in my cup. Yeah, I think we do when we tune in with gratitude to that upgrading a choice. You can feel it in your body. I know for myself, if I'm run down, I'm not feeling so well, I'm tired, then I'll cook something that's very easy to digest, like dal, mung bean soup with spices. Because it's, it requires so little for the body to digest it, so little energy. And I know when I eat that, I can feel my body thanking me. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a really good feeling to know that you're doing something to help yourself. It increases your self-respect. Um, it definitely increases well-being, a sense of well-being in the body and in the mind too. It really does. Active movement is also important this time of year, and I know that it's not always the easiest. And I'm giving so much thanks right now for the treadmill that we have that I can happily say is not being used to hang my clothing on. I'm actually getting on it uh, almost every day. And I've figured out a way to trick myself. I watch classes. I get myself in a, in a state of learning. So I'm either listening and learning or watching and learning and walking. Yeah. And it has made such a difference. And when I'm done, there's just a, this little part of me that's just so, my body is so grateful. It's mm-hmm. like, oh gosh, you know, that really wasn't, it really wasn't that hard for me to move. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's much easier for me to move when it's not winter, admittedly. And a lot of people feel like that. Well, again, you know, if you're looking at the qualities of copper yeah, and talking about its static, heavy nature. Yeah, I want to go just sit in my chair. Absolutely. That's what it makes us want to do. <laughs> the other thing to note too is we have we have less sunlight this time of year and 
I, as soon as the sun comes out, and it, it was out a little bit yesterday, it hasn't been out much in the last several days. Boy, my face is right in the window mm-hmm. or out right outside, even if it's for five minutes to just let it just, oh, that warmth and that light. And, and I know that seems kind of silly, but it's not silly. It, you want to get out in the sun whenever you can. You want to feel that in your bones whenever you can. Yeah. We need to be bringing in as much light and warmth as we can at this time of year as a, as a balancing, a conscious balancing act. We are having one of our very grey winters in the UK. So yesterday was a sunny day. I woke up and the sun was reflecting on the trees outside my window. So then when the rest of the house woke up, we were like, sun, it's sun. So we went out because... You have to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make, make the most of it. So we went to the woods in the afternoon and made the most of what light there was. And I felt so good for doing that and so grateful that I had a fairly free day and I could do yeah. that. But, you know, even if we can't, yeah, get your chair by the window, get your face out the window, see it, feel it, know it's there. It brings warmth to our bones, to our tissues in our body that counteracts too much of a cough or influence. It brings light to our mind which helps with anxiety, warmth and light are very, very helpful. And if the sun's not out, then light a candle in the evening and meditate with it, be with it, be with the light, feel the warmth, be with that energy. I go through so many soy candles and beeswax candles in the winter because my day begins lighting a candle. And <laughs> and, but I love it. It's part of the ritual. It's a part of, of bringing on the day. And, mm-hmm. and bringing yeah. in the light, and it's and it makes a difference. Yeah, it's good. So, how does knowing all of this, everything that we've just shared, how is this helpful for calming anxiety this time of year? Because the cough season has some good qualities in it that are helpful for calming anxiety, and if we know them and we know how to use them, they can benefit us. But if we're trying to push through, and we just feel like I should be getting things done, and we live in a world where really we expect everything to be the same all seasons. We live in quite an artificial indoor environment a lot of the time, so we're not always aware of these energies that are at play around us. So we feel like, no, I should just do it. So we're pushing. If we're trying to push through, at this time of year, we're going to become depleted because it's not a conducive environment. So that helps, knowing the energies that are around and how we can benefit from them and be grateful for them and not push against them. And the other thing is that anxiety is provoked by striving, overachieving, uh, too much information. We need rest periods, and this is a natural rest time of year. You know, if you think of a winter bear hibernating animals, that's the energy that's around us. So the Vata nature can write a long list of goals, but they can struggle to focus on one and bring it into steady action. And that increases our stress and overwhelm in the mind makes us lose respect for ourselves. It makes us feel uh, despondent. We don't feel like we're doing what what we should. So that's helpful to know. Another quality of puffer is it's cloudy. It's not clear. And we need clarity to make goals and to manifest resolutions. So it's not a clear time in our minds because of the season we're in. I find it helpful to know those things. Yeah, I do too. And to be in a space where I can celebrate what I can accomplish without expecting, because I used to over, I'm a recovering overachiever. (laughs) (laughs) And now I like to choose one or two areas that, I really want to make a big difference with in the year and then slow and steady move toward them. Yeah. And then continue to revisit them to see if they still have the same energy or interest or charge 90 days from now or, or what, whatever. But to celebrate little achievements, little changes in the choices that you make each day to look back and go, oh my goodness, look at what I did. Look what I gave myself today. Yeah. And you know, we're not saying that don't do anything this year positive or moving towards or aspirational. It's just don't pile on and expect it to be easy because it's the environment's not going to support that. But yeah, always making little changes for our health and for our well-being. That's always a good thing to do. 
And to remember, too, that when kapha's in balance, there's contentment, there's compassion, forgiveness, uh, wonderful sleep, nourishment, and repair and regeneration. That is where we're at right now. If, if we would be mindful to it and say, oh, yeah, okay, cool. I can have some of these dreams floating about. I can, I can have some ideas about where I would like thing to go, things to, to move. And, but how can I set myself up for the best for myself and my family without having to jump all in right now and have it all figured out right now? Yeah, it's a good time for rest, regeneration, gratitude, journaling. Uh, we need these wintering seasons. They've got a natural quality and order to them that we need. Look at the trees for teachers. The, the trees have already got their buds. Yeah, They've got their buds all the way through winter, and they're just holding them and waiting. And in spring, they manifest their beautiful leaves, and then flowers come. It's incredible thing to watch, but it's already there. The buds are there. It's just not the time to let them unfurl and develop. So for me, that's a really great teaching to reflect on at this time of year. Hmm. So let's focus on, on all of what we've talked about in this new year and be mindful of the seasons and Put yourself at the front of the line, knowing that you're going to benefit from good self-care and warmth right now in these winter months, and to keep anxiety in check and lead you toward more active energy of spring because you're doing such a good job of caring for yourself, looking after, after yourself now, so that when, when those buds do open, when, when we metaphorically start to, to move and come into full bloom, it's going to be much easier to move into that change, into that season. Yeah, this is a preparing time, resting, healing, looking forward, looking forward and developing a positive outlook, but it's a preparing time, a nourishing and preparing time. So all of these simple self-care practices that we talk about so much, resting, reading, walking and warmth, will all help take good care of our bodies and our minds and anxiety in the new year. Thanks for listening to Anxiety Slayer. If you want to learn more about Ayurveda, you're welcome to continue on our Patreon, where you can get a deeper dive into some of the topics we cover. Learn more at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer.